Good morning and welcome to St Francis in the Wood on this very warm summer's day. The Lord be with you. You'll notice that Alicia is not with us again today and she has got this week off, although she's kindly come in to help us with the camera work. As we begin our worship, let's take a moment of silence to be aware of God's presence wherever we are and however we are this day the God who is among us and between us and within us. Let's pray the collect for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost as we say together, Almighty God, we are taught by your word that all our doings without love are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this week is Psalm 138. And you are warmly invited to join in this psalm as we pray it together. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfil his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Now when Jesus came into the district of Kassara, Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on the rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. May we who have ears to hear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Picking up the story from last week, Jesus and his disciples have left Galilee, their home region, where they had run into trouble with the religious establishment, the scribes and the Pharisees. First, they headed to Tyre in Gentile or non-Jewish territory, where they encountered a persistent woman whose daughter was possessed with a demon. And she impresses Jesus with her faith that gives birth to her persistence and so to the restoration of her daughter. Now Jesus and the disciples have moved on to Caesarea Philippi, something of a Roman resort town with its famous temple to the Greek god of nature, Pan. Caesarea Philippi was situated on the road between Tyre and Damascus in what is now Syria, on a stretch of land that has changed hands many times and whose history has been dogged by dispute and confrontation. Here, in this in between secular kind of place, Jesus chooses to begin to ask his disciples about his identity. And in the process, ends up showing them and us something of their and our identity, who we are. He begins by asking them what seems to be almost an academic, abstract question in the third person. Who do they say the Son of Man is? It is not immediately apparent, to me at least, that he is asking about himself. He is asking about the Son of Man. And the Son of Man was an expression in Hebrew and Aramaic that could mean any and every human being in a universal sense but it could also be particularised as an ideal human being, a kind of superhuman being, almost divine, you could say. This draws on some of the apocalyptic literature in the Jewish canon, especially the Old Testament Hebrew Bible, and particularly in books like the book of Daniel, where a son of man figure appears to represent the divine ancient of days. This, it seems to me, is who Jesus is asking about. And given their answers, it seems to be what the disciples thought he was asking as well. So they come up with various historical figures. John the Baptist, recently executed. Or Elijah, who legend has it did not die but was taken up to heaven in a sweet chariot that swung down low. There was also a tradition that Elijah would return before the completion of all things. Or maybe it was Jeremiah, a prophet from a time of crisis and trauma in the nation's history when they were about to be taken away into exile in Babylon. Or perhaps one of the other prophets, a historical figure. The disciples were answering the question 
Who do they say he, the Son of Man, is? It's all in the third person. Jesus doesn't necessarily seem to be asking who people think he, himself, Jesus, is. Although it is true that Son of Man appears to be the most common epithet Jesus uses for himself in the Gospels. Then Jesus asked them, who do you, second person, say that I am, first person? Aha! An identification is being made between Jesus and the Son of Man. So, who is the Son of Man? Jesus. He is the Son of Man. But what does this mean? What does it mean to be, for Jesus to be the Son of Man? Who is the Son of Man? Who is the Son of Man for the disciples? Who do you say that I am? And here I'm conscious of how pregnant the words I am are, conveying an echo of the divine name, the name pronounced to Moses at the burning bush as I am who I am. And of course, there's all those I am sayings in the Gospel of John. I am the light of the world. I am the true vine. I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the good shepherd. I am the way and the truth and the life. Before Abraham was, I am. Who do you say I am? Direct question. One person to another. Just you and me. Not them, or he, or she, or it. Just the two of us. Who do you say I am? And with what I am sure is the same energy that compelled Peter to ask Jesus to bid him get out of the boat and walk on the water to him, blurts out, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus, you are the Son of Man. Not John the Baptist, or Elijah, or Jeremiah, or any of the others, but you the one who is standing before us right now. You are the anointed one of God, the Son, the physical presence of the everlasting Father, the living God. Jesus then reveals to Peter something about himself, about Simon Peter that he is greatly blessed because this hasn't been to revealed to him by flesh and blood or by any third person, but directly by our Father in heaven. Jesus has given Peter the nickname Rock. And he says that on this rock he will build his church on the rock of Peter himself, literally the man, or on Peter's confession of faith. Perhaps in our minds they have become blurred, such that Peter and his confession of faith are one and the same. But I think it is the direct connection, the direct connection with God, that is the key here, the key to the kingdom of heaven, which not even the gates of Hades, the Greek name for the shadowy underworld outside of the bounds of this life, not even they can stand against the kingdom of heaven. 
It is this direct connection with God that must also underlie the astounding authority that Jesus gives to Peter and by common extension to the church, that whatever is loosed or bound on earth will be loosed or bound in heaven. It is similar to when the resurrected Jesus in the Gospel of John tells the disciples that whatever sins they forgive are forgiven. And ominously, whatever sins they retain are retained. I do not see this as giving the church or any human institution arbitrary authority. That is something that every part of me recoils against, especially when we bring to mind the absurdities and cruelties of such arbitrary authority through human history, including that of the church. Rather, it speaks to me of the existential responsibility we have as human beings, as sons and daughters of humanity for life on earth, for governing the relations between people and peoples, and for the stewardship of creation. Then he sternly orders them not to tell anyone that he is the Messiah, which was probably very wise in Caesarea Philippi, of all places, where attracting undue attention with such outlandish claims in a city whose economy centred on the shrine of a pagan god would likely have landed them in even more trouble. Plus, there's a good chance that the disciples, like us, do not really know what we're talking about. And still, the existential question remains, hangs in the air for us. Who do you say that I am? A question for each of us, that only each of us can answer in our own way. And the answer we give will tell us something about ourselves and who we are.
We give thanks as we come together in his grace and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who need the strength and guidance of God's spirit in meeting the challenges that life brings. He knows our needs before we ask. Merciful Lord, we pray for the Anglican Church worldwide and we give thanks and pray especially for our companion parish in the Episcopal Diocese of the Northern Philippines, the parish of St. Francis of Assisi Mission in Kagibatan, and their priest, Kenneth Chaos. In our diocese, we pray for St. Augustine in Marpole, and we give thanks and pray for our St. Francis in the Wood here in West Vancouver. We give thanks for the ministries within St. Francis calligraphy, our card ministry with Karen Dodd, and communications with Sarah Andrusko. We pray for these members of our parish family, Charlie and Donna Ruddick, Tommy Russell, James and Natalie Chagrell, Julius and Nikolai, Wilfred Schwartz. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our bishop, Melissa, Angus, and Alicia, our priests, and all who give leadership in our diocese. We pray for Queen Elizabeth and for our country, Canada, and those in authority around the world. We pray for understanding and peace among nations. Give their leadership wisdom, humility, and honesty in their service of the people the peace and justice abound. We remember all those who lost loved ones in the dark explosions in Beirut. We pray for all the people of Lebanon as they seek to rebuild. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we commend our community of West Vancouver to your care. Bring healing and encouragement to all those in need for all who suffer, for those whose burden is too deep for words. Allow us all to feel your presence. This isolation is sometimes overwhelming. Give us grace to reach out to others, to offer encouragement. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially for those for whom prayers have been requested. Paul Saffron, Jr., John Galvani, David Cox, Derek Leeson, Glenn Brand, Martha Nuaneri, Jenny Evans, Bob Harold, David Golst, Luigi Galvani, Teresa Brandvold, and Tegan and Emma Wilder. We pray for others in need, out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people and ministries we support, First Steps in North Korea, the Harvest Project here on the North Shore, and Father Matthew Johnson on the St. James Ministry on the downtown east side of Vancouver. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died. We think of all who are overshadowed by loss or loneliness, and we pray to you for all those whom we love, but see no longer. We remember especially Neil Rissick and Angus Simpson. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord, as you have called us to fulfill your purpose, 
work in us and through us to do your will. Give us courage to face each day with grace. Give us strength when we are weak and endurance to offer hope and compassion to those who are lonely or afraid. Let us begin each day in thankfulness. And especially during this pandemic time, Lord, inspire us to greatness. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us draw our prayers together in the words our Savior taught us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us today it has been great to have you with us if you're with us on a sunday please do join us for our zoom coffee hour at 11 o'clock 
And also, uh, just a reminder about the survey we told you about last week. It's a very uh, short duration survey, both in the sense that it only takes five minutes to complete and it is only going to be available for a short time. And in fact, the survey will close at the end of today, Sunday, August 23rd. So we really would value your feedback. If you could go to our website or the email that I've sent out to parishioners and click on the link, um, we would be very grateful to hear your responses to the virtual worship we have been offering through YouTube and through our Facebook page and all the other Zoom things, of course. This week on Wednesday, we will again have our Bible study via Zoom. Please visit our website for details of what else is going on at St Francis in the Wood and we look forward to you joining us again next week from 10 o'clock for our next YouTube service. And now let us give glory to God as we say together, glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to share Christ's love in the world. Thanks be to God. Mm.